these are all from Panama from, I believe, the 1980s. Uh, my dad collected them when he was living down there, and we found a box of them that were just lying around in little baggies. And I really wanted to preserve these. So they're very beautiful, but very fragile. Um, so how do you protect something that is very fragile? Uh, my thought was to encase them in resin. Why, why does, why does this happen? Why does it go dark when you put resin over butterflies of these colors or blue and green? Why does that happen? Well, to answer that question, you also need to ask, why is the sky blue? Okay, you might just say, well, aren't the pigments blue? We're going with physics. A blue object, such as a flower, has a pigment where it is a material that absorbs all the wavelengths of light except for the color blue. Okay, but Blue pigmentation is very rarely found in nature. And you might say, well, isn't, isn't the sky blue? What about water? Those are, those are natural things. Those are a part of nature. But when I say nature, I'm thinking more about eukaryotic life. So even though there are some plants that are blue, it's pretty rare that something have has blue pigmentation that is living. Generally, bio, most bio, biological things aren't going to have blue pigmentation. So only plants can have blue pigmentation. So all animals include humans, insects, fish, all of those. And there are blue fish out there. There's blue frogs. There's blue butterflies. Some humans have blue eyes. So if in animals there is no blue pigment, then why are butterflies and human eyes and frogs blue? Okay, so let's come back around to this question. Why is the sky blue? Because the sky doesn't have pigment. It's not a material that only absorbs other wavelengths. It was actually dictated by particle size. So that's why the sky is blue, because all of these molecules are small enough that they overall re reflect the color blue. That light is scattered. Okay, so water is blue because it is a substance that light is able to refract through. So if you have a clear substance, Right? Light is able to pass and refract through it. It is more likely to create the effect of the color blue. It's not actually pigmentation in itself. It is just light refraction. So people with blue eyes don't have blue pigment in their eyes, it's actually the absence of pigment. So, because we know that uh, one person was the source of all, or almost all blue eyes on in humans in the planet, it's just a genetic mutation that was passed down. And that pigmentation is actually the lack of melanin. Melanin. Melanin is pigmentation in humans. But people with blue eyes don't have that pigment. That's why if someone has albinism, if they're an albino, usually 
pretty much almost always their eyes are blue because blue in biology is the lack of pigmentation. Or animal biology. Blue is the lack of pigmentation, so it's actually just light refracting through this blank canvas almost. So that's why people with albinism have blue eyes. Alright, so if we if we have these answers of it's the particles scattering light, they're not actually blue, they're just creating the effect of blue, then what is it that's being refracted through? So in the case of butterflies, it actually, like when you look at a butterfly and you look at its wings, you see that they're blue. But if you take a step, a look closer, if you take a look closer, you see that their wings are actually made up of beads thousands of little tiny chitinous scales. Chitin being a carbohydrate that is a structural component of most animal biology. So these chitinous scales usually have sort of a black or brown base behind them and clear basically flakes where light is able to refract through them and come back as blue. So these scales aren't actually blue, they just have a structural component that leads to the illusion of blue. What's happening here is that the light is passing into it and then reflecting and scattering back out. It's the interaction between the difference of the light passing through the air around it and passing through this tight, clear chitinous material, right? So it's that interaction that creates that effect because it's not created by any one, it's the amalgamation of all of these scales and the texture of them, the way the light interacts with the surfaces of these scales that creates blue, right? So if you, oh say, take a morph butterfly and you try to preserve it in a clear substance that it adheres to and fills in all the surfaces, it negates the structural components that allow the butterfly to be blue. It's no longer blue because it was never blue to begin with. It's just the reflection, the refracting light. So when you cover up all that texture, all those spaces, you fill in the space between all the scales, all you're left with is the original base color, which you can usually find on the back of the butterfly. So that is why when you are preserving specifically butterflies that are blue or green, you have to have to do shadow boxes. <laughs> do not do not try to preserve them in resin and save your butterflies. And with these guys, melanin is usually a color scale from yellow to... It's basically a big scale of red, and that can include browns. But that's, that's natural pigmentation of animals. So, yeah. That's why I was able to preserve this butterfly fine. It's a beautiful piece. And why this one was unsuccessful. And I now have it as an example of this physics concept, which I think is pretty cool.